Welcome to this Wyatt Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest Wyatt Health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. And joining me for this episode is Dr. Mafalda mil uh, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine uh, and a holder of a master's degree from uh, the uh, Faculty of Veterinary Medicine at uh, the University of Lisbon in Portugal and a current PhD student at Iowa State University. Dr. Mafalda, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Please give a little introduction about yourself and your background. What brought you into the swine industry? Okay, so I started vet school in 2014 and graduated with my DPM and master's in 2020. Then I worked uh, for a few months in a, with other veterinarians uh, in dairy cattle focused on biosecurity and animal welfare. And uh, then I applied for a master's program here at uh, Iowa State University. And I came here in the fall of 2021 uh, to work with Dr. Linares and with Dr. Silva, that is my advisor. And I'm now working on my PhD. l the pioneer postbiotic for digestive health in pigs. Brought to you by Adair Biome. With over a century of experience in postbiotics for digestive health, L-Biotics contains heat-treated lactobacillus cell bodies and their metabolites. Stable by nature, L-Biotics can be easily stored and incorporated in compound feed. Very good. We'll tell Daniel and Gustavo that uh, we say hello here from the podcast. Um, and you have chosen very good mentors, so I'm glad we were able to steal you away from dairy and I'm really glad that you're working on some important questions for the swine industry. We're here, Mafalda, to talk about your PhD project, um, which is a big project looking at how we can predict PERS outbreaks, or maybe not predict them, but quickly identify PERS outbreaks in sow farms. Tell us a little bit about what you're looking at. Yeah, so we started looking uh, at sow production data, such as the number of abortions or pruning mortality, and we are also looking at feed data, feed intake, uh, off-feed events to uh, detect early signs of birth outbreaks. Dr. Silva already did a, a project about this in the past, uh, just focused on uh, the sub production data, but we added the feed intake too. Very good. Um... So you're looking at feed intake. How are you collecting that? I mean, a lot of times for most producers, feed intake for a sow farm is just by delivery. So 24 tons at a time, maybe. Uh, how are you measuring feed intake on the sow farm level? So we are currently working just with uh, sow farms that have electronic sow feeders. But uh, I know that uh, are some farms that w where they measure the the feed intake manually so maybe we could work with those too but currently just with farms that have electronic sow feeders for those electronic sow feeders mafalda do you look at just the number of sows that get fed every day or do you also look at the number of times that the sows go through those feed systems because in a lot of those electronic sow feeding systems the sow could go through 10 times maybe uh, she only gets fed maybe once or twice of those two times, but she can keep going through. Do you track kind of the, the total number of times through as a measurement of lethargy or no lethargy, or is it just the number of sows or percentage of sows that get up for one meal at least every day? Well, I'm looking at a lot of different things in the feed intake. So I'm looking at the proportion of uh, the number of times that the sow goes there and doesn't eat. Uh, I'm also looking at the number of times she goes there and eats. I'm just looking at the general off-feed events uh, in the in the herd. And uh, I'm going to work in different granularities of data too. So I have access to the sow, uh, individual sow intake, the pen, and then the herd. So I'm looking at those three levels too. Very good. Very good. Well, um, don't keep us in suspense any longer. How many sow farms were the data have you looked at, and what are you starting to learn? Well, uh, so far I've looked at 18, uh, 18 sow farms 
and a total of 14 outbreaks. And I'm seeing some interesting results with the, both the sow production data and the feed data raising alarms uh, up to eight weeks before the processing fluids came positive to PERS. Very good. And it's interesting and it's uh, impor Im important to look at this data. And you have production data from these farms as well, correct? Yes. So how does the the feed intake patterns, the eight weeks ahead of time, how does that compare with other metrics that we'll commonly associate with maybe uh, the early clinical stages of a PERS outbreak, like abortions and increases in stillborns? How does the feed data compare with those other parameters in these outbreaks you've been able to investigate? So we can see that uh, it doesn't happen in all farms. It depends uh, a little bit in the, on the status of the farm too. We are working with stable farms that then had a PERS outbreak, but um, we can see that when the number of abortions and the number of dead cells are increasing, the number of off-feed events are also increasing. So it's important to look at more than just one indicator okay so it's, it sounds like fairly simultaneously um we'll see the abortions and the sows going off feed roughly at the same time yeah exactly. very good and to your point if we see one but not the other uh, we should be concerned but that's probably uh better than having both if we have both of those things happening then we probably need to be really concerned exactly and something that i'm i'm working on is i'm working with a lot of different models, testing a lot of different models, univariate models, multivariate models. So using uh, more than one indicator in one model at the same time. And uh, I think that is helpful to, to look at all these models to find the one that optimizes the performance. So decreases the false negatives, the false positives, uh, and that gives us the best results. Are the results that you've seen consistent across farms, or do you see a lot of variation that suggests we need to study hundreds of farms, not just, you know, 14, 18, to, to truly understand this? Well, if I could get more data, amazing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But I can see the same results in the majority of farms that I'm working with. So anybody who's out there in Mafalda that has electronic feeding systems in one of their sow units, and has had a PERS outbreak, that'd be data you're interested in, in getting a hold of. And if so, kind of what's the best way to connect with you? How can somebody find you um, if they wanted to say, hey, Mafalda, I have some additional data that may contribute to your research? So they can just Google my name and put Iowa State University and they get my email there. So just contact me through my email. Yeah. Very good. Um, and if anybody out there uh, has my email, but not my fault is, I'll offer up uh, my help too. Uh, I can play middleman and you can email me and I'll be happy to connect you with Mafalda that way. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, happy to do it. And so Mafalda, let's talk about big picture. What can this project add to what we're doing already? What can this add to the existing, you know, we're looking for stillborns, we're looking for abortions, we're looking for, for other signs of PERS outbreaks. What can this project add for producers and for the industry? So what we are doing with this data that uh, has not been done before is that we are adding a lot of different data sources and the farms are giving us the data in different formats, some through email, uh, some farms, they allow us to get access to the data that we need. So we can create some APIs and with that, we can automatize everything, automate everything, right? Yep. Um, so from the collection of the data to the analysis and to the reports. So that's another thing that we are adding. And uh, we are also, as I said, testing a lot of different models and new things that I haven't read yet in, in the literature. So I guess we can add some more valuable information to the swine producers and veterinarians with this project. 
Excellent. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholerasias and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Beringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both stereotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Beringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. Well, it's a very interesting work. I uh, congratulate you on all of your effort and wish you the best of luck on continuing it. Um, working for Daniel and Gustavo is hard, but I can promise you it's uh, it's very rewarding. You've chosen good mentors and a good place to be. Thanks, uh, Mafalda, for coming on to the show and to our audience. Thank you very much for listening to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast. Please check us out at swinehealthblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on our next episode next week. Uh, for Dr. Mafalda Mill Almench, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thank you very much for joining us, and please have a great rest of your day. Mm-hmm.